In this video, I go over my time-saving shortcuts for Final Cut, which are simple, but awesome. Recently, I put out a video called 10 Tips for Producing Content Faster. And in that video, one of my tips was learn your shortcuts in your editing software, in my case, Final Cut. And I said, do you want a separate video for this? You said yes, so here it is. Just to say that if you're a Final Cut master, you probably already know these tips. And um, But you know, it's still gonna be a fun video and it's, it's never a bad thing to have a reminder of some of the really good ones. I also wanted to cover a few of my workflow methods as modestly, I've become quite efficient at producing content quickly. So I'll go through a few of my processes and some of my commands and workflow style that um, I'm sure will give you um, some food for thought. But if you're new around here, I'm Harv, I'm a video guy. It would mean the world to me if you could hit that subscribe button and um, it just, you know, means a lot to me, helps the channel grow, it's all good. I've also timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the one, the, you know, the bit you want, no problem. Um, these videos are also not brought to you by any kind of sponsor or company, uh, except for maybe my Patreon backers. The way that works is any funds from Patreon go back into the channel to buy gear and do unbiased reviews and then I give the gear to my backers and um, it's inexpensive. If that's of interest, do check it out. It's all linked below. I'll go through more of the workflow side of things later on in the video. And in particular, I want to focus on audio because I come from an audio background and I've got some awesome uh, free plugin recommendations that they're just, they're just kind of must get plugins. And I know you're gonna find them helpful. Anyway, on with the shortcuts. First of all, for Pete's sake, don't use the blade tool and cursor to make cuts. This is, I imagine, what you do the very first time you edit with Final Cut, and it's slow and not generally how pros do it. I mean, whatever works, of course, but you know, there are definitely faster methods. The first thing to nail is making cuts and deleting sections, being as efficient as we can and using as few commands as possible. This is kind of editing bread and butter and one that we definitely wanna get right. And I'm gonna do this with just using two commands. The blade cut command, which of course is command B, and the trim start command, which is option left bracket. Let me show you what I mean. So we've got this short clip that's a square format short version for my Instagram and TikTok accounts. And I want to get this chopped up as quickly as possible. As I'm only concerned about the sections where I'm talking, I'm gonna set it so I can only see the waveforms on my timeline. And then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna find the end of each passage, position the playhead just after each one, and then hit Command B. That will make a cut. And I'm gonna work my way along the timeline and repeat. Once that's done, I'm gonna move the playhead to the beginning of each passage and then hit Option Left Bracket. And as you can see, that makes a cut and removes all of the footage that we don't want where I'm not speaking. And notice that I'm now working from the end of our timeline backwards. The key here is that for the first round of cuts, your hands stay in the same place, one on the mouse, one on the keyboard making the command B cut. And then once all of that's done, you move your hand position to the other position where you're hitting option left bracket. And this allows you to just build more momentum. And once you get the hang of it, you'll notice a significant speed increase. Next is another bread and butter group of commands and that's to copy, paste, and then remove effects from clips and then selectively do all of those things. Let me show you. I've got two example clips. This one is graded and then this one is not. Of course, I want these two clips to look like they belong together on the same timeline. So for the first clip, you can see what I've got going on grading wise. So let's copy all of that across to our second clip. So I'm just hitting Command C and then Option Command V. And there we have it. That's a really nice starting point for getting the grade looking good and matching the other clip. Of course, you wouldn't want to hit just Command V, otherwise that would paste another instance of that clip rather than it its effects. But let's say we made a mistake and we actually didn't want to paste on the vignette plugin. So we can just hit Command Z to undo or we can use Option Command X to remove effects. And then we can just paste our effects again, Option Command V and untick vignette 
and there we have it. Additionally, we can selectively remove effects as well. Just hit Shift Command X and you'll want to deselect everything you want to keep and boom. This is really great if you want to affect a whole bunch of clips all in one go. It's very flexible and just something I use all the time. Next, I want to show you some of the retiming shortcuts the Final Cut has. And again, I use these every single day. The first one I want to show you is the one that I use the most often, and that is the hold function. And this effectively gives us an adjustable freeze frame and it's super useful. All I'm doing is just hovering my cursor over a certain point and then I'm hitting Shift H for hold. And you can see part of our clip will change color and we can drag this to suit the length that we need. That's amazing. Next, let's get into speed ramping because you know, why not? This clip was shot in 100 frames a second so I can slow it down no problem. There are a couple of ways that you can do speed ramping. You can either start chopping up your clip and you know, changing the timings, but that is not what I would recommend. Instead, I recommend hitting Shift B. As you can see, that's introduced a few timing cuts and I'm gonna try out the one on the end until it's down to 25% speed because you know it was shot at 100 frames a second that brings us down to 25 because you know I live in the UK if you know you know in the end we're left with this beautifully smooth speed ramp love that shortcut anyway next I want to move on to keyframes and these are again things that I use every day it's becoming a theme so back with these clips and the first thing I want to do is hit Control V and that opens up the video animation options for our clip. You're probably already familiar with this, but double click where it says compositing opacity. And you might just grab these handles and pull them in for a simple fade in. However, this I believe is not the best way to do this. Instead, I'm gonna hover the cursor over and hit option K to add a keyframe. I'm gonna do that twice and then drag down the one on the left and have it start right at the beginning of the clip. Make any other adjustments we need. And then here's the key, right click on the line and then select ease. This adds the secret sauce and adds a really silky smooth greasy fade in love it don't forget that visually this is a really nice way to edit your keyframe points and almost all conceivable other parameters you can edit in this way like this one with the blur amount around our vignette I've got it decreasing as the clip continues the possibilities are endless okay let's do a few quick fire shortcuts and one of my favorites compound clip I've been harping on about how good compound clips are for so long now select your clips hit option G and then you can load on plugins. And this is really useful for things like EQ and compression on the audio side of things. Love me some compound clips. Next is potentially something you want to do when you know you're going to get up from your desk and go and make a cup of coffee or something. You might want to render selection so that when you come back, you can just watch everything and it's going to be completely smooth. This is of course, assuming that you've got the background render function switched off, which I kind of think is the established best practice. Anyway, we're selecting our clips. We're hitting control R for render and then we're gonna go make coffee. You can see the progress bar as it creeps along and when you're back with your beverage it's all silky smooth baby. And one little bonus tip on the subject of you know speeding up the performance in Final Cut for you is if you work with optimized media you know if you create transcoded files or anything like that or proxy media it's not a bad idea from time to time to go in to file and then delete generated clip files you'd be surprised how much hard drive space this eats up for example the main drive I use for this channel is an 18 terabyte drive and I noticed it was getting full the other day so I cleared these generated clip files and it cleared over 10 terabytes on my drive think about that all right now let's go through the bonus workflow tips that I promised at the beginning of the video and the first one is to start using if you're not already adjustment layers and what better way to show you that than to show you clips from this video. You can see I've got some clips chopped up nicely and I've got my adjustment layer across the whole thing. And this contains all of my color grading effects, as you can see. One reason I love this is it seems to be easier on your system's processing power as it's just one instance of all of these plugins instead of lots applied to lots of clips. And if I want to be super quick and edit without them, I can just switch it off by selecting it and then hitting V and that disables it. As for the adjustment layer itself, this is actually not something that is included in Final Cut, but you can get it free. Either just Google it or I recommend this one. And this is made by Eric Lenz. And the reason I like it is because it is renameable. Now, why is that cool? Well, you don't have to have all your effects on one adjustment layer. You could split them up if that makes sense for your project. 
For example here, I thought, you know, let's add a vignette and that can just be on its own separate layer. And that works brilliantly. This is just an example, you know, the sky is the limit with, you know, the way that you like to grade. So yeah, adjustment layers, go get this one. It's free. I'll link it below for you. Here's another workflow time savey thing that I like, and that's to have some defaults with my text. So I've dragged onto my timeline, just an instance of uh, a basic title. And you can see here, I've got my half profile. This is how I like my text to be on this channel. But let me show you how you can set up your own. Let's say, you know, you're mad for Optima. You just, you can't get enough of the font Optima. Well, we can do that. Just go through and select all of your favorite settings for, you know, your text options, everything from size to tracking, font, style, and then go up to the menu and save it. It's the kind of thing that saves you a few seconds every time you use it. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, time is money and this kind of thing adds up. Moving on to the audio side of things, and not long ago I did a video called Audio Secrets for Filmmakers, which was very popular. And these tips are taken from that video, largely. So if you find these interesting, I would urge you to check out the full video, because it goes into far more depth. So really the most important one is to add audio effects to your entire project by selecting all, Command A, making it into a compound clip, Command G, and then we can load on our effects and get the whole project sounding good. And this leads us on to the first of the free plugins that I recommend, and it's called Buster SE from a software producer called Analog Obsession. This is basically a fantastic compressor that models the style of compression you get from the master bus compressors on the big mixing desks you find in commercial studios. This one is actually inspired by the SSL 4000 series bus compressors and other companies have done great software versions of this like UAD and there is an official SSL version, but holy crap, these are expensive. My next must get free plugin is called TDR Nova from a company called Tokyo Dawn Records. It's a parallel dynamic equalizer, meaning it selectively reduces certain frequencies depending on the volume. And the main reason I love this is because it's an awesome de-esser. It does the job brilliantly and doesn't color your sound like some can. So whatever you do, don't try and EQ out your S's. It's a really dumb way of doing that. Bung this on your tracks, use the DS profile and set and forget. My final free plugin recommendation is called Clipper from a company called Initial Audio. This is a soft clipping plugin, but to be honest, I recommend just watching the full video about this because I go into way more detail about how this works and how you can apply it to your workflow. Well, there we go. I think I better stop there for now. Otherwise, this video is just going to get too long and no one wants that. But just to recap, we went through some really quick basic editing toolkit shortcuts with my super efficient cutting and deleting sections commands. Of course, copy, paste, remove effects and then selectively doing that. We then covered some of the retiming shortcuts and then adding keyframes, a little bit on rendering and then quite a bit on speeding up your workflow within Final Cut. And I just hope it's helped. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I'm regularly in the comment section, so definitely let me know, you know, what did I miss? What other commands are just, you know, must know commands and um, definitely load up the comment section. I want to get a nice conversation going and we can all learn together and level up. I've now made over 300 of these videos of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.